Welcome back to the InfoWars live coverage of the sixth GOP debate in South Carolina. I'm David Knight. Joining me are Leanne McAdoo and Jakari Jackson, and they are introducing the candidates right Still now, about waving. ready to uh, give them their first questions, and they're waving to the crowd. There's, there's uh, yeah. Ben Carson, and he's had a lot of problems uh, over the holidays. Uh, his campaign manager and many of the staff left. Uh, they were upset because he was getting, uh, uh, they were getting divided uh, uh, control based on a friend of Ben Carson's, who is also a talk show host. They felt that uh, this individual was running the campaign and subverting them. Uh, he called uh, the press to come to uh, his house, and at that point he says, we're going to have a big shakeup, and that was right before the holidays. They all thought they were going to lose their job, and then he changed his tune and said, no, you're all okay. They left, and today he fired his uh, uh, campaign finance uh, 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 head honcho who was making $20,000 a month mm. <laughs> uh, for management. So he's had a lot of problems wow. with management. Let's go to the debate right now and see what the question is here. First question. Research, jobs is one of the Job. biggest issues. Here we yeah, I guess this is going to be standard boilerplate uh, Fox Carolina. business stuff. The president is touting 14 million new jobs and an unemployment rate. How many jobs did you create? Half. How many jobs would you create? You didn't build that. <laughs> Anyone who claims America's economy is in decline is peddling fiction. Mm. Senator Cruz, what do you see that he doesn't? Well, Maria, thank you for that question. And let me say thank you to the state of South Carolina for welcoming him us. Let me start. I want to get to the substance of the question. You're welcome on jobs, to me, us. I want to start with something. <laughs> Today, many of us picked up our newspapers. And we, we saw stories about Ted Cruz. <laughs> yeah, while, while he's yes. doing that, uh, Zero Hedge, I believe, ran a story just the other day talking about how the uh, the new job numbers are somewhat misleading because the job numbers also include uh, single individuals who hold multiple jobs. Yeah. So if you work at you work part time McDonald's, you work part time at Burger King, you're like, well, look at all these new jobs. These are people who are forced to work these part time jobs because. Of uh, current uh, reg regulations, it's difficult for them to get a full-time job with full benefits. Yeah, because of Obamacare. Yes. Obamacare says you work more than 30 hours a week. They redefine what full-time job is. You work more than 30 hours a week, then you're going to have to give them insurance so the employers cut their hours down. So now they've got to try to juggle the requirements of two different employers. Made their lives a lot more difficult. Plus, 17% of the jobs are being held by immigrants who've come in, arguably to take jobs at a lower cost. All the job growth since 2008 has gone to immigrants. The United States of America. Now, I'd just like to point okay. out that he did not answer the question That's about right. what do you yeah, think about the naysayers so I to throw think my that we haven't here. created any jobs. He said, well, I want to talk about the fact that we're giving billions of dollars to Iran, and when I'm president, I'll make sure I bring the full fury down on them if they take some of our sailors. Like, Ted Cruz is, is probably... Someone the, told him that. His advisor was like, talk about the Navy sailors. Yeah, he, he's probably the uh, uh, slickest of the debate. He yeah. was on the debate team at Princeton, and uh, they were talking about the fact that Ted Cruz will get asked a question. He has dominated uh, the time uh, that, that all these people have, and one of the reasons for that is because when they ask him a question, he doesn't answer it. He talks right. about what he wants to talk about, and they come back and say, well, you didn't answer that question. I'll give you another chance to do this. Mm. Uh, and yeah. that's a good example of how they ask him a question about jobs. He wants to talk about Navy sailors uh, being on their knees so he can uh, yeah. you know, wave the flag. Right. That's basically it. So, David, are you saying that Ted Cruz is a master debater? <laughs> yeah. yeah, more or less. Okay, so now they're asking Kasich about uh, the stock market. What actions would you take? If the same thing happens all over again, just as in this example, you are taking over the presidents. Well, look, it takes three things basically to grow jobs. And I've done it when I was in Washington, when we had a balance. Ask him budget. about the stock market. Ask him about Lehman Brothers, where he and Jeb <laughs> Bush worked and took all of this uh, so, uh, massive you paychecks. You heard about this. I mean, he was going out, he was working for Lehman Brothers. He was selling junk investment to the teachers unions and, and uh, pension plans. And he got, I think it was a half million dollars. It seems like that's a figure that keeps coming up again. Yeah. He got this huge, uh, several hundred thousand dollars. Uh, commission at the time he was selling junk to people on behalf of Lehman Brothers and you know Jeb Bush is uh, was also there but. half a million must be the amount that you can inadvertently forget to <laughs> tell anybody about yeah it's only half a million yeah. so it doesn't really quite I always forget when people owe me money like that when you reduce taxes and when you
you have fiscal discipline, you see the job creators begin to get very comfortable with the fact that they can invest. Right now, you don't have the, you have taxes that are too high. You have regulations. I mean, come on, they're affecting everybody here, particularly our small businesses. They are, uh, they're in a position where they're smothering people. And I mean, are you kidding me? We're nowhere close to a balanced budget or fiscal discipline. Those three things put together are going to get confidence to they job have, creators, and you will begin to see ways. Yeah, they, they will have a lot of comments about job creation and tax policy. And they, they will not go near the Fed. I guarantee you, they won't talk about the Fed and its balloon policies that are they're now in the process of puncturing them as they've raised interest rates for the first time. And we saw that happen before, uh, raising, uh, lowering interest rates and keeping them low for a very long time, and then raising them a quarter of a point at a time until they can explode the uh, uh, yeah. bubble. Well, indeed, Fox Business doesn't want to talk about auditing the Fed. Global events have many people worried. Iran detaining American sailors, forcing them to apologize. North Korea and its nuclear ambitions. And Did you say that you were uh, that we've got uh, uh, Richard on the uh, ground there in South Carolina? Rob? Yeah, we've got Richard on the ground here. Ready okay. to go if you guys want to take him. Yeah, let's go to Richard right now. Let's go to Richard, uh, reporter in uh, Richard Reeves, our reporter in South Carolina. Richard? Yes, sir, David. Thank you very much. We're out here, obviously, at the Coliseum where the event is taking place. And uh, it's been a heck of a day. Earlier, Joe Biggs and I were at the RNC meeting. And uh, lots of y'all that listened to the audio program with Alex today probably heard the interview with Dave Ajima talking about how that he had practically zero support, zero support for an impeachment resolution, basically something that really is almost toothless anyway to start with. But he, um, he only had three allies in the Republican National Committee that would be willing to help him with uh, passing this impeachment resolution. So that gives you an idea how at the RNC level, the yeah. establishment GOP is solidly in control. That's and, right, and that's uh, out of how many people, uh, Richard, do you say is 160 something people? 168 people, yeah. and including Dave Ajima, you're talking about uh, only three or four advocates for impeachment. Wow. And, but, but, a lot, but like he said, a lot of people say, well, it's too late for impeachment, et cetera. But one key thing he said at least twice on that interview is that it's never too late to do the right thing. That's right. It's never too late to do the right thing. And another thing that just kept coming into my mind and my heart as a patriot is that those 168 people, they shouldn't be GOP establishment rhinos. They shouldn't be neocons. They shouldn't be total sellouts like they are. It should be 168 info warriors in there deciding to impeach Obama and going to the House reps and saying, hey, you know what? We're not even going to put you guys on the ballot because you guys are not for the United States. You're not for the Constitution. You're not patriots. So guess what? We're going to make sure and put patriots on the ballot. And that way, at least one side of the ballot will be good people. Yeah, I agree with you. Absolutely. And, you know, when I listened to uh, Dave, uh, is Ajima, is that how you pronounce his name? Yes, sir. Yeah, Ajima. I mean, he, he was a straight up guy and, and it re reminded me of uh, Winston Churchill in the history of the English speaking people. What he talked about was he said, when America had its revolution, it was a liberation for England as well. To overthrow that tyranny of a dictator, king, enabled them That's to right. have a parliamentary government. That's when those people really became strong. And so the Democrats need to understand as well that they don't want to have a Republican dictator down the road. And as uh, Dave Ajima pointed out, many of these Republicans are saying, we want to have this kind of power when we get in, uh, in office. So they're they're good with the fact that uh, uh, Obama is acting as a dictator. They don't have a problem with that. They want to be that when they get the power structure themselves. Yeah. Well, sooner or later, that's what they're hoping, that, th that it'll be their dictator. And going yeah. back to that point you just made also, that the United States becoming a free country helped England, and a lot of those people get more freedom over there. Well, this time, the way I see it, right here, standing here in now 2016, I see that potentially that the United States breaking free again from its bonds and chains of the NWO could mean that way more countries this time around the planet no, and around the you. world could I institute something more similar to the United States Constitution, but for real, with all the uh, God-given rights that we're supposed to have. So I, I see our movement impacting with communications now the way it is. It's not like a slow boat across the Atlantic over to Europe to uh, get the word and the news. Nowadays... Right here we are with an iPhone broadcasting to the world right now, right this second.
So there's no reason why we can't bring freedom and liberty to the whole world this time. And uh, if, at least, you know, get that's why, 10 or 15 countries. That's why, Richard, it's important when we see places like Catalonia or Scotland uh, talking about trying to get their independence back. I think that sets a pattern of behavior. People say, well, hey, they did that there. Why couldn't we do that here? Why couldn't we break off the chains of a distant, oppressive government? Why couldn't we have more say-so in our own lives at a closer uh, a government that is closer, that is more local to us. Thank you, Richard. We're going to come in back to, we're going to go back to uh, the debate right now. We have Jeb, exclamation mark, uh, making. <laughs> yeah, he just said that he, he learned Thank from you, his Richard. brother. I'm going to destroy Russia if I'm yeah. president. And he just said the one, best thing he learned from his brother was peace through strength. Yeah. War is peace. No, and worse, yeah. worse yet, to be honest with you, Hillary Clinton would be a national security disaster. Think about it. She wants to continue down the path of Iran, Benghazi, the Russian reset, Dodd-Frank. Iraq. All the things that have, that have gone wrong in this country. She would be a national security mess. And that is wrong. You know what? He'd just be a, a threat to the rest of the world, you know, blowing yeah. up people over, you know, false spot, yellow cake documents. <laughs> it's just amazing to me that they that they have restarted the Cold War. And of course, let's let's remember that it was the Democrats who restarted the Cold War, uh, but the Republicans want to do it good and hard, and they want it to they want it to go hot. The president says that ISIS doesn't threaten our national existence like uh, Germany or Japan did back in World War II, that the terror group is nothing more than twisted souls plotting attacks in their garages. Oh, uh, little hooligans. Security funded by our government. Yeah, yeah, funded by our government. That's the important point, Rob. Yeah. Those right. little punks got out of Let's control. Let's not say that. Okay, we're going to all pretend. So. It's how, little how punks with rocket launchers, courtesy of Western governments. Right. Then dangerous nutcases now. Yeah, I would go, first of all, one step I, further. I'm just absolutely fed up, too, that Neil Cavuto would pretend that ISIS is, is not some creation of the U.S. government. How many times do we have to show it? Someone show the doc, show the report. Information appropriately or how did they get those and someone who lies missiles out of Benghazi? I mean... <laughs> ...can never be president of the United States. Yeah, well, that's a decent statement there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the problem is they won't talk about anything but in Gaza. Right. You know, they won't talk about the bigger and picture. And lies about that and... Mm -hmm. <clears throat> ...that needs to be cut to si down to size. And that's how you get a foreign policy where we cut deals with our enemies like Iran. And we betray our allies like yeah. Israel. And we gut our military. And we go around the world like he has done on 10 separate occasions. That was for you, Sheldon. Did you catch that? He said our allies like Israel. That's for Sheldon Adelson. <laughs> He's trying to get that... Uh, <laughs> Hundred million dollars from Sheldon Adelson. ISIS, not just against <laughs> ISIS, but against radical jihadist terrorists. And it is a war that either they win or we win. When I'm president of the United States, we are going to win this war on ISIS. Are you going to win it by stop funding them? That's my question. Yeah. Right. It'd be so much Force. easier to beat yeah. them if you'd quit dropping them weapons. And if we capture any of them alive, they are getting a one-way ticket to Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, and we are going to find out everything they know. I thought uh, we were shutting that down. Crowd yeah, yeah. Loves Gitmo. Let's make another one. Thank you, you know, I had a couple of, there were a couple of interesting articles this week, uh, interviews of people who were released out of Gitmo after being held for 14 years and never charged. Yeah, so. But tortured throughout the, one of the individuals uh, had bruise marks in the uh, impressions of the change that they beat him with. Understand that, you know, Obama and the people on the left should be as angry about this as I am. Obama said he was going to get rid of Gitmo, and he didn't. Instead, what he did was he signed the NDAA, saying they could have indefinite detention of American citizens by the military, to do the same thing to Americans that they have done to these poor people that they picked up that had absolutely uh, no connection to Al-Qaeda, held them for 14 years, tortured them. One guy from the time he's 26 to the time he's 40. Now they're releasing him. Right, or the people that you do know are really high-ranking within these terror cells, and then you release them mm -hmm. and yeah. say, we're going to keep our eye on them for a year. I promise they won't get right back to terrorism, and of course, they have. Yeah, we'll let them uh, get on Twitter so we can track their activity. Yeah. And we have enemies who are obtaining nuclear weapons. This is, uh, we all need to be afraid. We need to have uh, full-on war on terror. All civil liberties need to be sacrificed. Uh, safety, they're going to give you safety if you give up all of your freedoms. Let's just lay it out on the table and just, just have them all agree to that, sign a statement, and then we can just finish this debate. Because this is what they say every time. And it's no wonder that, you know, so many young people are feeling the burn because of the things that he 